recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. The cream of the crop. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil, and today we have a very special episode for you, our post-Mother's Day episode with a special guest host in Liz Hudson. How's it going, Liz? Good. Nice to see you guys. Mm-hmm. Good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for you know, dropping by on Skype. Uh, even though people may call us mothers sometimes, uh, we're not actually mothers, <laughs> but you're, a, you're an actual mother. So I'm an actual us. mother. I might be both. I don't know, but I'm for sure one. <laughs> yeah, it just depends on who we ask, I guess, right? Uh, joining me in the studio, as always, uh, is Ken and Jeff, and uh, fresh from his Avengers, uh, Avengers of Affinity War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his Avengers Infinity War uh, marathon is Matt. How's it going, Matt? Uh, I'm so full of spoilers, but... Uh... I'll, I'll leave them be. So I know people get upset about that. Matt walked in. He was really excited. And he said, guys, uh, there was a press conference and Tony Stark said he was Iron Man. Spoiler. <laughs> He's that far behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he went in reverse order. Um, and it was also Liz's birthday. So happy belated birthday. Thank you. Um, so uh, we're basically going to uh, go back into a two on two match. Uh, it's going to be uh, Ken and Matt versus me and Jeff for, uh, to see if I guess me and Jeff can fall, I guess. Yeah, we've been doing pretty well, so we'll see how we're. we're it's going to happen eventually. Yeah, uh, you are the LeBron James to our Toronto Raptors. I'll tell point. you what, you are the it's Thanos so to our Avengers. <laughs> it's so impressive. We're the LeBronto, as they say on mm-hmm. on the internet. The yeah. kids, the kids. Uh, right before we start, Liz, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, from the last time we saw you? I don't know if there's much since the last time I saw you guys. I still live in Oakland. Um, I still have two children. Um, let's see. I did get a new job. I'm doing technical project management now. Super exciting. Um, and I did just recently go to Chicago and see Hamilton for the second time. Um, well, second time I've seen Hamilton. First time I've been in Chicago. It was all really great. Um, it's a beautiful city. It was like 78 degrees on Tuesday when How I was lucky there. for you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we were yeah, considering it, it was, snowed here two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, we were, I just had my fingers crossed, but, um, yeah, it was really nice and had some good deep dish pizza. Mm-hmm. Uh, From yeah, where? Nice. Exactly. That's where, where? Uh, Giordano's, uh, I think. That's always solid. Though. Classic. Yeah, yeah, that's always solid. And uh, you should be seeing uh, residuals from the Oakland Five invention any day now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be watching the mail for my 25 cent check. Yeah, we were just going to uh, we were just going to bring that up actually. So Liz uh, is the uh, illustrious inventor of the Oakland Five, uh, the five point wager in our final round. Uh, that has been used by many people. So, um, yeah, we're gonna have to keep tabs of that because she probably is owed some sort of money. <laughs> You'll get the uh, um, trademark information soon out there. Yes, Chicago, I'll send it over. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just uh, we'll we'll throw it over to uh, Liz to host it. Uh, but first, let's uh, throw it to the rules guy real quick. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream, yeah. The cream of the crop. I'm going to start with question one, and the category is mythology. Uh, although he doesn't wield Mjolnir, Perun is the Slavic god of this weather phenomenon. Uh, we're in. Yeah. Okay, so they're in. So it, according to the clues in the question, I would think because he does not wield Mjolnir... Um, it would have to be a lightning storm, lightning bolt, something to do with lightning or thunder, because because Thor is the god of thunder and he wields Mjolnir. Well, if he's the god of thunder, then let's go thunder as opposed to lightning. We're gonna lock in with thunder. And uh, we chose the same for the same reasons. That is correct. He is the god of thunder. All right. I feel good. I feel yeah, good. Yeah, a mythology question good that is uh, unlikely. So. It's, it's let's be honest. That was a Marvel question for us. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I tried to, tried to throw that in there for you. I know. Me. I should have been on that after my my uh, binging. All right. Question two. Um, the category is literature. Who is the narrator of To Kill a Mockingbird? First and last name, please. 
Is it not? Uh, okay, so. Okay, so you guys are in. Yep. So uh, he wrote Atticus Finch. I thought maybe it was the the daughter Scout. Okay. Was it was Scout right? Scout is the daughter. I think yeah. maybe it's from her perspective. Okay, same last name, right? Is that... Yeah. So Scout Finch. Yeah. Okay. Do, you, do are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I mean Atticus Finch is the name that I. I've know. only seen the movie, but for some reason I feel like it's narrated from the daughter's perspective. Yeah, I read it in second grade and haven't really thought about it since then. So second grade, second grade for a, a book about like racial tensions in I the was south. Very advanced second grader. <laughs> I peaked in it second all, grade. It all fell off from there. So. Right. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's go with Scout Finch. Yep. Okay, uh, we went with the same. We went with Scout Finch. That is correct. Scout Finch. Is wow. The Look at us go, yeah. man. If you haven't, first of all, reading that book in second grade is crazy, but you should probably read it again today. It's good. Yeah, it's still good. Okay. <laughs> it holds up. I like it. I remember. It does hold up. Uh, question three, the category is American culture. What annual event was first held in March 1762 in New York City and was organized by Irish soldiers serving in the British Army there? Well, I right? Think that makes sense. That's that day, right? Yeah. Okay. We are locked in. What are you thinking, Jeff? I need I, to know what's what day. Well, I, yeah, that's why I'm curious about what they're talking about. Because, you know, initially you think St. Patrick's Day. Right. Because um, it's in March. It's in March. That would make sense. Irish soldiers in the British Army. Um, they would be looking for probably their own cultural holiday to celebrate. I think that would make sense. Yeah, I wonder Since if... Since St. Patrick is, you know, notably an Irish figure. Is that what that is? Although, whether he drove the snakes out of Ireland is probably questionable. If there were ever snakes in Ireland. All right, we're locking with St. Patrick. Same here. That is correct. St. Patrick's Day. Wow, this is this is I, some kind of record. I'm just really distracted because you keep sucking coffee through a straw. Like, <laughs> like a maniac. No, it's good for your teeth. I just had dental work. Yeah. My teeth hurt, so I'm using a straw. Fine, I'll be nice. <laughs> I had that two weeks ago. It was mm-hmm. unpleasant. Yeah, I, I can't stand the dentist. Oh, I don't think they're listening, so... <laughs> we, we don't have any <laughs> dental listeners. It's not, it's not that you don't like going to the dentist you just you don't like stand your dentist. dentist no my dentists are very nice it's a collection of different dentists who are very good at their job but and the place looks really nice they have tvs it's it's oh. a it's a great outlook of the, of the uh town but i just hate getting my teeth worked on because they always mess it up and i have to go back two or three times you're an anti-dentite <laughs> I, yeah, <anti-dentite>, yeah. <laughs> okay question four in the category of art this Picasso painting utilizes, in part, its very large size to communicate the horror of its subject. I don't. I don't think I can name a Picasso painting by name. I can see a bunch of them, but the names. Yeah. I just don't have any. Ken's gonna write down an answer. And we're it's funny you said Van Gogh, and like five Van Gogh titles came to mind. And yeah. I'm thinking about Picasso paintings, and I can see them, and I just don't have names. Okay. Did you write Starry Night on the Rhone? Because that's definitely not no, a Picasso no. painting. We wrote. Right, we're, we're we wrote in. a painting down. So this painting, I'm almost positive. The one that Liz is talking about is about the Spanish Civil War. Uh, it's a really big painting. It's a battle scene. Uh, it's really famous. Um, I cannot remember the title of the painting, and that's going to bug me. But do you do you know, Jeff? I know I'm pretty sure for a fact that's the Spanish Civil War is what she's talking about. I mean, I, that sounds familiar. I, I wish I could picture the painting in my head because I might get to a title, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, man. I cannot think of the title. I'm just, okay. I, th- I think if Neil is right, I know something that I could say to make him remember the title of it. So, so so you will not. not. (laughs) Um, So, do you want to go with uh, Captain America: Spanish Civil War? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Just want to go with Spanish Civil War because I can't think of the title. Fine. Okay, that's our answer. All right, uh, we are going with the hands of the peasants. I think that's a different artist. It is, and it's a notable quote from The Office. But uh, (laughs) hands of the peasants. Uh, It's so it's eleven and a half feet by twenty five and a half feet large it's huge and uh neil is right it is about the spanish civil war and the title of the piece is guernica ah that's right i was wrong yep i've definitely heard of that like the popular brand new song guernica yeah oh i believe so we don't like brand new anymore oh that's right we're we're becoming old people it's controversy (laughs) no there was controversy it's not because we're old it's because we're uh we're woke we're woke (laughs) (laughs) All right, question five is in the category of sports. All right. What is the only Major League Baseball team to never have a pitcher throw a no-hitter? Ah, damn. Ooh, that's a great question. Well, I've heard this before. I'm leaving it to Matt. Mm-hmm. Is it the Washington Generals? <laughs> yes. I want you guys to know my children are telling me they know. Oh, they do? 
Right. <laughs> They're pointing at me going, I know. Speaking of Washington, and we'll see how how well this uh, this statement ages, uh, you know, by the time this airs. But uh, Washington Capitals beat Pittsburgh last night. Mm-hmm. So it's now 3-2. to two. I hope Pittsburgh loses. So do I. <laughs> and uh, when this airs, we'll see how that statement ages. Yeah. Uh, ages. I I don't like Sidney Crosby. Who does? He's a wealthy, successful whiner, and I do not like him. <laughs> you guys are full of hot takes. He's don't like fine. the dentist. Don't like Sidney Crosby. Yeah. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> well, <man>. Ovechkin <laughs> is a huge Putin fan, so unless there's he's, that too. Unless he's so. related to to Bing Crosby, I have no idea who that is. Sidney Crosby. He's like the captain. He's the captain. I know. I don't. I don't watch the it. Penguins yeah. of of uh, what Benedict Cumberbatch would call the Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're locked in. You you had written down some newer teams. I was kind of on the same track because um, yeah, I, I thought that the, would give yeah. us better odds. <laughs> that, yeah, the newer they are, the less time they would have had to have done a, a no hitter. So I wrote down the Rockies, the Diamond Diamondbacks have kind of been decent for a long time. Were so the Rockies decent? I feel like they had a season they were okay. Maybe like one, but I I feel like they were never that great. That's fine. Rockies also came into my mind. Um, I know the Rays are a newer team, but they had some success, right? Yeah, I think so. In the early 2000s. Um, I could see them having a decent pitching staff. Every time I think of the Rockies, though, I just don't take them seriously. That's why I'm... That's fair. Wanting we can to go with the Rockies. I don't know. I think it's... Because they're purple. I think it's because they... No, I think it's because they're purple, but they don't own it. That's why. <laughs> okay. They should own the purple. Like Gogo Bordello. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go Colorado Rockies. That's an, another reference to Gogo Bordello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rockies is a good guess. Uh, they're famously known for being in a stadium that's very very hitter friendly um i would i was thinking them but i believe mike hampton pitched a no hitter for them at one point uh diamondbacks uh, i thought but they had randy johnson and kurt Schilling for a while and i think there might have been a no hitter in there uh so i just locked in with the rays all right well i was writing this question a couple weeks ago and a guy came very very close to making me take this question out of the game because he almost did it but the answer is the san diego padres oh Hmm. They are often the answer to who has never, what team that has never done. That's crazy because they've been around for like 40 years now. Yeah. I think if you asked me to name every team in you the league, wouldn't even Padres, have named the Padres. Padres would be the last one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of the point, I think. The only thing I think of with the Padres is the great Tony Gwynn. That's really mm-hmm. all I got. They, yeah. They've had one good player in yeah. 40 years. I think that's all they Anyways, have. Anyways, they're not my real Padre anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, the Mets actually have one, although it's a little suspect. So Ooh. <laughs> if, you ever, if you ever look it up, they're my team. I'm not even sure. It L- was a little New York fixing going on in there. There was definitely a hit that they called that yeah. they called a, an uh, error. An error. Yeah. yeah, a little home cooking. <laughs> yeah, as we call it. Or maybe it was that it should have been called a foul ball and it was called a hit. I think that's what it was. It yeah. was suspicious. <laughs> anyway, fair enough. I guess I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Uh, question six is in the category of cars. Uh, what car is nicknamed the Tin Lizzy? Uh, I think we're in. Okay. Yeah, you're the car guy. You would know. So, notably, like not a great car. Maybe mm-hmm. like a LeBaron or Pinto or something like the that. Pin- the Pinto was uh, my first thought, but let's go Pinto. Okay, locked in with Pinto. Well, let's not overthink this. So, yeah. so in the spirit of Mother's Day. And also, I can't get it out of my head. I've been thinking about Arrested Development now that they're going to season five is going to be coming out. Uh, my mother decided she'd come back as a car is stuck in my head. Mm-hmm. That I can't believe that's a TV show. So just look into it for all of you who've never heard that reference. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the answer? Uh, we believe it's the Model T Ford. Okay. The correct answer is the Model T Ford. If you ever see the movie Cars, the Model T, the old car, her name is Lizzie for that reason. It's like after uh, six questions, we have 30 points. You guys have uh, taken the lead once again with 40. Close so, game. This, game. The first, this is the first time there's been a lead. Yeah, there's a, they're always close games. All right. Uh, question seven. The category is business. What animal is used to describe a slumping stock market in the United States? It was either that. It's either that or the other. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Jeff locked in for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be a bear market. Yeah. I'm not so feeling here. as bullish on our uh, <laughs> chances in this game, but we went with bear. Bear market. That is correct. Question eight in television. What is the name of the Simpsons dog? You write it, but let me see. Cause I don't even watch the Simpsons. Let me see if I can figure this out. It's, um, ah, I think I do know it. I think I do know it. <laughs> you guys are locked in. Yeah. All right. I don't watch the show. I think it might be like Santa's little helper. Oh, yes. 
I got one. <laughs> are, you, are you locked in? We're yeah, locked in. Yeah, we locked in, yeah. yeah. And I wrote down Santos L Helper, but it's Santa's Little Helper. Is that number one or two? No, there's only one Santa's Little Helper. There's multiple snowballs. snowballs. There's multiple snowballs. Ah. Snowball. So um, that that was in like the first season, right? They pick them up from, from the a great first track. episode. Yeah. yeah. That's the first episode. First episode ever. Yep. That is correct. Santa's Little Helper. <laughs> Well, I got one. That made me feel good because yeah. we're we're doing a uh, we're doing a special Simpsons theme trivia night coming up here uh, at the end of the month or beginning of the next month. Uh, I think May thirtieth. End of, end like of May. Yeah, yeah, if you're in Illinois, we'll uh, we'll post on our page. That's but, a live event. A yeah. live With event. With liquid courage. Liquid courage. <laughs> uh, but you guys can definitely come out. If you heard Jason on our listener submitted episode, uh, he was hosting, so he's going to be hosting a themed event. We're going to write some questions for it. I will not be because I know nothing about the Simpsons, but maybe I'll write one just about Santa's little helper now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, question nine is in the category of American history, or just America, I guess. What was the 48th state admitted to the Union? You know this one? You guys are in? We're in, yeah. Yep. I think it was either New Mexico or Arizona. I was thinking Arizona. What were you thinking? I just can't remember what the last one was before the uh, non-contiguous ones. Yeah. I feel like I feel like it's Arizona, because I feel like they're proud of that fact. Okay. So we're going to lock in with Arizona. We locked in with the same. Uh, I believe it was admitted in 1912. Just have to believe you at that. Uh, <laughs> the answer is Arizona. All right. That one comes up a little bit. So. Yeah. I also said it at Trivia last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, Jeff and I were just mind melting. Yeah. <laughs> same wavelength there. Yeah, I, was that the text you got this morning? It, it said questions dot doc. <laughs> yeah, but, though to be fair, if everything that Jeff talks about is off the table, then there's very little on the table. That's true. <laughs> okay, question 10 in the category of films. What is the first and last name of Robert De Niro's character in Taxi Driver? Got it. We're no, in. but you know it, right? Yeah. A little something for Neil and Ken there. All right, we are in with Travis Bickle. We are also in with Travis Bickle. That is correct, Travis Bickle. After the first round, uh, it is 70 for us and 80 for Neil and Jeff. It's pretty so. good. Pretty strong. It, it feels good after that after last, last week. week's beating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We needed a cleansing. <laughs> uh, before we go into the swing round, Liz, uh, since you just saw Hamilton in Chicago, which I don't think any of us have seen, right? Mm-hmm. No. no. Um, other than Hamilton, I'm not sure if it is one of your favorites, uh, what would be one or two of your other favorite musicals of all time? Even if you haven't seen them, just the album. Uh, well, I don't usually listen to the albums if I haven't seen it. Uh, Hamilton was the exception to the rule because I didn't. Yeah, spoilers, right? I didn't. Ex- yeah, exactly. I didn't know if I was ever going to get to see it, and I was like, I have to participate in the zeitgeist. So um, I listened, <laughs> but I have seen it twice, and it is. I think it's my favorite. I really like Wicked a lot. Um, that was my favorite before this, and I have seen that. I haven't listened to Dear Evan Hansen because I. That's one that I'm trying to hold out on before I go see it. I was, I was the same way as you. I was holding out on it, but then I caved in, and it's a really great album. But Hamilton I still have not listened to because I kind of want to see it and make my own judgment, like you said. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really love them all. Growing up, I really liked Showboat and um, Les Mis and Phantom of the Opera. My dad is a huge musical fan, and we just listen to them sort of all the time. That's great. So, yeah, I feel like uh, a lot of people don't uh, appreciate live theater as much anymore. So get out and support the arts. No. Yeah, and I'm really excited. I just got <laughs> Sweeney Todd tickets. Yeah, that's right. For a little, little local it's, theater. It's one of my favorites. Make sure you guys go get some uh, meat pies after or before mm. the show. <laughs> Definitely. You know, they're doing Delicious. like a they're doing a dinner and uh, oh, they are and performance. Well, that's an option. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but the uh, the dinner is pretty funny. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Okay. Uh, the swing round. Um, what I'm going to do is name a celebrity, and you need to tell me their other half of the celebrity couple. Oh, I can't Ooh. wait for this. This is going to be uh, good. <laughs> there are 12, there are 12 uh, people listed, and you can get four points for each of them. Ooh, the Oakland um, Four. Liz is always, yeah, is like always so inventive here. Yeah, I like to mix it up. Don't worry, there's a possible two-point bonus later so we can get back to easier math. Perfect. Well, hopefully Matt will, uh, will be able to get some of the sh- or like pop culture couples <laughs> forming here. Yeah, Matt's bag is full of Us Weekly and, and uh, people. Yeah. <laughs> and people. Okay. Number one, Kristen Bell. Uh, yeah. Was that the thumbs up for Kristen Bell or knowing the answer? Uh, I know the answer. <laughs> but I like Kristen Bell too. Yeah, who doesn't like Kristen Bell? Uh, number two, Dwayne Wade. Number three, John Legend. Number four, 
Jay Cutler. This okay. round is totally just for me. I love so it. So we're, we're okay so far. <laughs> Number five, Ryan Reynolds. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. Number six, Tom Hanks. Burning. Number seven, William H. Macy. I'm going to give you a joke reference after we're all said and done on that one. William H. Macy is... Uh... That the lady from Boogie Nights, yeah, who's yeah, who's always <laughs> sleeping with other men. <laughs> the one in, yeah, the one in the uh, the driveway. Yeah. Number eight, Nick Offerman. Number nine, Ellen DeGeneres. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh God, I love this round. <laughs> <laughs> it's too easy, I guess. Number ten, Bradley Whitford. Oh, wow. Ooh. Number eleven, Freddie Prince Jr. And number twelve. Tom Cruise's first wife. We are locked in with our answers. Okay, number one, Kristen Bell. Um, that's Dex Shepard. Yep, uh, Jeff and I are both. Good, good for him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, Jeff and I are both huge Kristen Bell fans, and uh, mm-hmm. we put Dex Shepard. That is correct, Dex Shepard. He must, he must be real funny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it doesn't seem to be, though, so that's kind of weird. <laughs> he's, in a, he's in a good place. Number two, Dwayne Wade. Uh, we went uh, with Bring It On superstar Gabrielle Union. <laughs> That's what she's from, Gabrielle Union. <laughs> Correct, Gabrielle Union. Number three, John Legend. That's uh, yeah. the Instagram uh, queen, yeah. Chrissy Teigen. Twitter superstar. Yep. We went with Chrissy Teigen. Chrissy Teigen is correct. Number four, uh, Jay Cutler. Uh, this yeah. woman's kids might have the measles. Uh <laughs> That's uh, Kristen Cavallari. But at least they live in the hills. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we want Kristen Cavallari. They're sick with polio, but <laughs> <laughs> but they have a really good throwing arm, so <laughs> it's okay. Kristen Cavallari is correct. <laughs> Number five, Ryan Reynolds. I'm assuming we're going current. Uh, well, yes, yeah, not, not Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, it would be uh, Blake Lively. Yep, uh, star of The Shallows. <laughs> <laughs> Blake Lively. Hey, you don't sleep on Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. It's good. Vic Lively is correct. Number six, Tom Hanks. Yeah, we we I I know this this lady and I couldn't think of her name. Uh, so we're just gonna say Tom Hanks is married to the job uh, and go with Frank Abagnale. Ooh. <laughs> uh, would it help if I told you that Marta's making me go to that stupid awards show with her and I'm gonna stand up there like Rita Wilson? Mm, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Arrested Development for any of you who didn't get that joke. <laughs> Rita Wilson is correct. Uh, number seven, William H. Macy. Yeah, no clue on this one. So I'm going to say uh, there were sparks between him and his co-star of The Cooler, Maria Bello. Uh, Seems unlikely. If you've seen any interviews with either of them, they do pay, uh, they do make reference to the fact that they're married quite a lot. And they've been married for quite a long time. Very long time. That would be Felicity Huffman. Mm. Mm. That is correct, That's, Felicity that, Huffman. That like, seems to make sense. Desperate Housewives fame. Yeah, they're both very like solid actors, and they like w- like working, so it makes <laughs> they yeah, both like people, working. Good people. <laughs> they like to work. <laughs> Neil's personal friends, William H. Macy and Felicity <laughs> Huffman. That's right. Um, number eight, Nick Offerman. That's uh, Megan Mullally. I think it's shown in no finer quality than their appearances on together Parks on Parks and Recreation. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. would be Megan Mullally. Hey, Ron. Yeah, I, she's so good. <laughs> Amy Poehler's impression of her is so good when she does her impression. Yeah, it's so good. Anyway. That is correct, Megan Mullally. Number nine, Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, we went with uh, Portia de Rossi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Portia de Rossi. Portia de Rossi. Is correct. I just noticed that their names are kind of similar. Mm-hmm. DeGeneres and DeRossi. I don't know. I never thought of that. All right. Number 10, Bradley Whitford. Um, I wasn't 100% sure on this. I was like 95%, but I believe uh, he was married for a long time to Jane Kaczmarek from... Um, Malcolm in the Middle. Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, we just uh, decided maybe some sparks flew on the side of Get Out and went with Daniel Kaluuya. That would be a, a right. cute couple. The answer is <laughs> Jane Kaczmarek. Good uh. job, guys. Yeah, they're destroying this round. Yes. Uh, this is this is my favorite round I've ever played in my life. <laughs> so thank you, Liz. Happy if, to provide. If that doesn't speak volumes. I was debating between this round and a Pulitzer Prize winning authors, so I was trying to keep it light for the Ooh, morning. But Good choice. Yeah. yeah. Um, number 11, Freddie Prince Jr. Uh, so I'll, I'll give a little uh, Neil story here for Liz since she's here in honor of <laughs> our number one fan of these. Uh, so I think I might've said this before, but I had a workout set in my basement, uh, for a while when I was, uh, in seventh grade, as I would work getting out, jacked. getting jacked, uh, <laughs> as I would work out, there was a, a big poster of Sarah Michelle Gellar as Buffy that would oh, motivate God. me to get jacked. <laughs> 
I've actually sampled your your little workout set there before. Oh, have you? Yeah, I mean, your brother did a little. Yeah. Uh, it was still set to lift. fifteen pounds. Is that yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's also so weird that you only the one arm got jacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we went with Sarah Michelle Geller. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct, Sarah Michelle Geller. All right, last but not least, we have Tom Cruise's first wife. Um, the earliest I could remember mm-hmm. uh, romantic entanglements with Tom Cruise was his co-star of Eyes Wide Shut, Nicole Kidman. Okay, so Tom Cruise was married to Nicole Kidman. Uh, before that, though, he was married to an actress, I think it was like the late 80s, like 86 or 87. She's the person who introduced him to Scientology, and that would be Mimi Rogers. Ooh. Mimi Rogers is correct. Wow. Or Neil and Jeff to get them all in the swing round. I'm Neil. And I'm Mark. And we're the hosts of Movieality, a movie discussion podcast. He's a writer, producer, and director, and I'm an editor. Together, we have a combined 20 plus years of industry experience. But more importantly, we're just really big movie fans who like to discuss, debate, and geek out over all types of movies. From backwoods horror films all the way to Oscar bait. Was 1994 the best year for movies? Could body swap movies make a comeback? Will this guy ever get his dream date with Elizabeth Shue from Adventures in Babysitting? Will you ever stop talking about Spielberg? Why are you shut up? Not likely. Plus, every other week we interview industry veterans and fellow movie fans alike as we get to know them better through their passion for movies. Join us every week on Overcast, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Should we do a post credit stinger like Marvel? Only if we get that Disney money. All right, so after the swing round, it is 102 to 128, so still a pretty close game. Washington Generals are still right where they need to be. Yeah. In striking distance going into the second <laughs> half. What can go wrong? <laughs> okay, uh, round two. Um, the first category is video games. Phenomenal. What game has the infamous quote, I used to be an adventurer like you, then I took an arrow in the knee. That's what I was thinking, yeah. too. I was just uh, concerned that it was another similar title. It's I'm... I'm pretty sure that's it, though. You're locked in. Um, so, yeah, Jeff and I... Jeff plays old video games. When I do, I'll play, like, an old video game here or there, but uh, I'm not too caught up. Um, the only thing... That, the first thing that came to my head was uh, Uncharted, just because uh, I can't remember the main guy's name, but he has, like, the mentor dude with the mustache and the Hawaiian shirts who always is like, I wish I was on this mission. Um, so that's all I got. That's fine. We'll okay. go Uncharted. Okay. All right. So this is definitely an Elder Scrolls game, um, and I and we're kind of torn between Oblivion and Skyrim. Uh, but we were both pretty sure it was Skyrim. So we're locked in with Skyrim. Hmm. The correct answer is Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. That's all really right. disappointing. I played that game. I think there's like a bunch of memes with this yeah. thing with taking the arrow to the knee. Mm-hmm. Uh, question two is in current events. With the birth of her second daughter in April of 2018. Who became the first senator to give birth while holding office? Ah, we're in. Yep, you got it. Damn. Yeah, we're locked in. Is that bird on your end or our end? I can't hear. Oh, it's my end. <laughs> Is it in your house? <laughs> Is it really loud? I can barely hear it. You guys can hear it. Oh, quite quite, quite clearly. Yeah, we like it. Yeah, Liz, and Liz actually, if you haven't seen Itania, she has a bird on her shoulder right now. <laughs> I know. That she's feeding. Uh, so Jeff and I, we locked in with local senator uh, Tammy Duckworth. Same here, Tammy Duckworth. Tammy Duckworth is correct. At 50 years old, she had that baby, yeah. which is amazing. Take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> hot take. Mother hot take. <laughs> yeah, a nice Mother's Day take. question yeah. for us. Okay, question three is in American presidents. Uh, the United States has had two presidents named Thomas, one of whom is Thomas Jefferson. Who is the other? Thomas Edison, not a president, right? <laughs> Jeff, can you confirm? That is correct. <laughs> it's not uh, Benjamin Franklin Gates, right? No. I'm just going to keep throwing as many National Treasure references as I can. <laughs> uh, while Jeff is thinking, I'm just going to vamp and name as many presidents as I can. Don't bother. I've got them all. I recently just memorized them all in order. A couple sketchy spots, but I think I got it down. Mm-hmm. What uh, was your format? How did you learn them? I just wrote down the ones that I could and then looked at the ones that I couldn't remember and just in my head like tried to make some connections so that I could keep the chain going. Hmm. They don't really make any sense to anybody but me, but like that's actually how I know it is from a uh, like a children's book that has like like a story going along with it that doesn't make any sense, uh-huh. and eventually you just get the flow of how it. You sounds. just get the flow, yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of little mnemonics for those harder sections, like between like be- like numbers like ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. Those remember. So 
um, when I was in school, actually, I learned them set to like the Yankee Doodle theme song. I don't know why. It was like second grade. Yeah, that was when Clinton was in office. So I actually have more trouble with the recent four. <laughs> than I do <laughs> I with anything before that. <laughs> you were alive. <laughs> Yeah, I know. But then I'm like, oh, yeah, what happened after that? Because like I have the whole song up until then when I was in second grade. And then it's like, oh, OK, let's say let's say Calvin Coolidge just for the fun of it. OK, so uh, before uh, he was president, he was a suit designer and film director. We're going to go with uh, the famous Tom Ford. Um, <laughs> but uh, realistically, I do remember that uh, he was adopted and changed his name, I believe. Oh, oh yeah. I know who it is. Uh, but I can't remember if that's correct. Uh, Gerald Ford changed his Gerald Ford changed last his name. name, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he changed his first name, too. Oh, could be. Uh, side note, Gerald Ford's real name is Leslie King. Oh. Um, that was his birth name. Sometimes people will ask what king was president, and that's right. That is the answer to that. Um, but this answer to this question is the president who led us in World War One. The answer is Thomas Woodrow Wilson. Oh, oh okay. I did think of him, but obviously did not pull the I trigger. To, I was trying to think what his middle name was. Apparently, it was Woodrow. Woodrow. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know he's got a middle name. That's why. <laughs> okay. Uh, question four is in science. Uh, Neil's favorite <laughs> branch of science the periodic uh, table of elements. What element has the chemical system symbol SN? We are locked in. Yikes. Um, I've been watching a lot of Breaking Bad. This doesn't help me at all. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking, Jeff. <laughs> that would be wrong. Would that might write? not be a Selenium? thing. Selenium? Selenium, silicon. I was thinking silicon because sulfur, so. SU, right? There's... Or is that just S? Let's I'll help you silicon. out. Sulfur is just S. Yeah. I'll Let's give you a freebie. Silicon. Okay. We're locked in with silicon. I believe silicon is SI. Mm. The tricky one that you are looking for is tin. Tin is correct. Ah. It is uh, based on the Latin name for tin, hmm. which is got. like just like stanum silver, and like gold silver and gold and gold. tungsten. And I, knew, I knew that tin had a weird one, but I didn't remember that that was that. There were so many S's to choose from. Yeah. And it was a T. Fair enough. Okay, question five is in food and drink. What type of drinkware is a Moscow mule traditionally served in? (laughs) Uh, We're locked in. Yeah. Yeah. Copper mug. Copper mug. Copper mug. Copper mug all around. Copper mug is correct. Yeah. Lots of lots of big drinkers in this room. Yeah, I know. No, it's just because that story of that that previous restaurant you worked for. Well, everybody oh, yeah. threw a fit when they didn't serve it in a copper mug. Yeah, so that stuck with me. <laughs> okay, question six in poetry. How many lines does a sonnet have? Ooh. Okay, we're we're in. Uh, not sure if there's a Shakespearean sonnet. Oh, which let me is... let me let me think about this for a second because I know that one. Yeah, so there's a Shakespearean sonnet, which isn't necessarily a standard sonnet. Oh, it's not. It. I mean, it could be. That's what I'm thinking. I, so I think it's between eleven and fourteen. So we're locked in with eleven. Jeff wrote down fourteen, and I didn't really have any reason to disagree. So we just went fourteen. The correct answer is 14. Yeah. I would like to thank Daniel Mankoff. I hope he listens to this show. That would make me very happy. Oh, he taught you about sonnets? Yeah. yeah I guess he did. Yeah, he taught me about I'm, sonnets, too, I'm I suppose. reciting the entire Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day one yeah. in my head. Such a romantic, Ken. I yeah. still ended up with 11. So, so the thing is, so <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So a Shakespearean, <laughs> a Shakespearean sonnet might not be necessarily a traditional sonnet, so they might have less lines. Mm-hmm. Well, and the line breaks might come where the... I looked it, I looked it up when I was writing this, uh, because the question that I saw actually said Shakespearean sonnet, and I thought maybe it was different, but it is 14 for all okay. sonnets. I'm not sure what makes it a Shakespearean one other than... He wrote it. His line breaks just right. might not come where you expect. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that makes it a Shakespearean sonnet is if Christopher Marlowe wrote it and somebody dies in it. I compare Jeff to a summer's day all the time, though. so Because he's hot and miserable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Temperature wise. Uh, for question uh, for question seven, we have a special guest reader, my uh, 11 year old son, Beckett. Hey, hey Beckett. Hello, Beckett. He's going to put on the headphones and read this question for you guys. Now, Beckett is also an accomplished podcaster that we've we've listened to before. That's right. Hi. Hi, Hi Beckett. Okay. In geography, which is the only U.S. state with a non-rectangular state flag? Oh, well, we're locked in. <sighs> Ooh. Beckett, bring in the thunder. I was really, really... Um, I think so. I was really going into this with some trepidation that I would get stumped uh, on a geography question. But it turns out it was a flag question, so we're good. <laughs> so we're in with uh, what we remember t- as having a pretty bizarre flag, uh, Ohio. 
Uh, I'm very sad that they got this right because it is Ohio. The correct answer is Ohio. All right. Sweet. Thank you, Thank Beckett. Yeah, Beckett. Thank you, thanks Beckett. For, thanks for 10 points. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you. See you later. Beckett is such a strong <laughs> name. I feel like he's going to be a movie star. <laughs> He'll be happy to hear that. Uh, writer, maybe. writer, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. A writer. My uh, birthday party on Saturday, we had trivia night, and you know we were, had like a little dance party after. And Beckett said it was so much fun. He hopes he's a celebrity so that he can just party every night of his life. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, we're on maybe, our way. Maybe right? one day. <laughs> that, that's my reminds me of one of my favorite lines from Love Actually when Bill Nye he uh, he goes, "Hey, hey, kids, it's your uncle Bill." Uh, don't do drugs. Become famous. They'll give them to you for free. <laughs> tell, tell Beckett. Tell Beckett that fame is not the uh, should not be the end goal. Though you should pursue something that you love and mm. become famous for it. That's very mm. thoughtful. Yeah. No, excellent don't, advice. Don't give kids the uh, or just become Instagram don't, famous. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't do what you love. It doesn't pay the bills. Uh, look yeah, up, he really just wants a Lamborghini. So whatever. Look, yes. In there. Look uh, up Lil Tay and do what she's doing. A kid after Please my own don't heart. Do that. I, I want a Lamborghini. That's never going so, away. So, uh, Matt, I discovered... Uh, 14,000 years, you're going to be there. I, I hesitate to even mention this because I don't want to give this kid any more exposure than he already has, but we uh, I discovered Lil Xan the other yeah. day, and boy, that is bad. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> Kids are famous for doing really stupid stuff right now. I'll probably edit it out because I don't even want to give them the exposure of they did a uh, They did a survey of high school students, and the number one career they would like... YouTube star. Being famous. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. No that's other career. Yeah, no other specific ambition. Yeah. That's what I was trying to relate to young Beckett there. I will uh be sure he listens to the episode and gets your sage work. But he probably shouldn't <laughs> listen to me. This is a very special episode. I'm not a very <laughs> successful man. It's true. None of us really are. That's okay. <laughs> okay, question eight. The category is language. In China, what number is considered unlucky because its pronunciation is similar to that of the word death? Okay, we're in. You'd think it'd be 13, but 13 is lucky. I think it might be f- four. Or no, it might be seven, actually. I'm pretty actually. sure four is a lucky number. I think it's seven, then. Because seven's lucky here. It's unlucky in China. Chin, I believe, is seven. I can't remember. It's been a long time. I think it... E-R, Sansa, Wu, Chi. Because four is my lucky number. Uh, of course he knows Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just fix it out. <laughs> well, you know I studied Chinese for a while in calligraphy, mm-hmm. but that was years ago. And... All I know is it's not 13, and I don't think it's 4. So I, I want to I want to say it's 7, because we have 7 as a lucky number here. I'm so embarrassed I don't remember what death is. But yeah, 7 You're going to find out if we get this wrong. We're going to go with 7. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, want to know what death is. Uh, we, went, we, we locked in with 7. Uh, sorry, Jeff. The correct, correct answer is 4. Uh, oh. Didn't we say 4? No, I said 7. That looked like a 4 to me. <laughs> <laughs> I said four. I, I made a four to Matt under the under the table here, and then he wrote a seven with a very bowed top. It looks like a four. You know what's funny? I always I always jokingly say that Chinese lucky number is four, but I think I've convinced myself over the years that it is a lucky number. And I was making so, a joke apparently. So if we lose years. by ten, yes, we know who who's to blame. Yeah, me. <laughs> Yeah, in a, when you write the Chinese words for four and death out, um, they are exactly the same except the accent. So the word is exactly the same except the intonation. Yeah, oh, like, just like my sevens like, and fours. Uh, like we, su and su. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> su is four. I can't we, remember. We, I can't yeah, remember. And then it's what, like su. I think it's su. Is it rising tone? Su? Yeah. We've had some. Uh, we've. <laughs> it's, the, it's the little U looking one. Oh, so it's uh, so it, it drops and then rises. So it'd be su. Uh, yeah, to be way over. So me and Matt, our greatest downfall is not knowing what the other person is writing. We've lost out on probably fifty points just That's based happened, on yeah. that alone. Okay, question nine is your opportunity for your bonus two points. Uh, the first part of the question is, what is the name of the villain in Spider-Man: Homecoming? And the bonus is, who played him? Having just seen this, obviously, I know I had no idea I was writing right into this event. Not it's the, funny. It's the only Marvel movie I haven't finished. Yeah. yeah. Ken and I started watching it a while back, and I just never finished it. <laughs> it's good. I know it's good, but I just I enjoyed haven't it. gotten back to it. I have a, a former employee who was a finalist to play Spider-Man. Really? Yeah. And he was not allowed to talk about it for three years. Those contracts are no joke. Oh, the NDAs? Yeah. yeah. Okay, the, we're in. The Spider-Man? The Spider-Mans. Um, so we went with uh, Vulture and portrayed by former Batman Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. And we're going to go with Shocker, portrayed by Marshall Logan Green. But it's Ooh. actually uh, Vulture <laughs> by Michael Keaton. We said Vulture, Michael Keaton. Both. <laughs> yes. Vulture, played by Michael Keaton, is correct. If you want to go go for a deep dive. <laughs> yeah. All right. The last question of the round is in restaurants. 
Founded in 1921, what is credited as the first fast food restaurant in the United States? Locked in. Oh. A, a question that's near and dear to our hearts. John Taffer, what do you have to say about this restaurant? Take that food, throw it away. Throw it all away. Shut it down. Nobody eats. I was to say, a restaurant for which Ken has gaining affinity for oh. because of their new Impossible Burgers, White mm. Castle. Yeah, the... Uh, the place Harold and Kumar are searching for, uh, White Castle. White Castle is correct. It's a rare site here in California. We don't really see them. But. There's one like half a mile. A mile oh, they're here. everywhere out here. Yeah. Well, we know uh, a, a big famous local place here that, they, I don't know if it's near Oakland, but uh, Sean Hayes is friends with the owner, Portillo's. Do you guys have one near you? No. They're just starting Maybe to kind of go nationwide. I know there's one sold. in California, but if you can find one and you're near it, it's called Portillo. It's just like an American uh, food place, like beef and hot dogs and burgers and things like that. Where were you going with that? Were you just plugging Portillo's for free? <laughs> yeah. it's. A, I would just, I think Liz would enjoy it. <laughs> it's part of his money-making plan. Yeah. <laughs> so going into the final, it is 164 for me and Ken to 200 for Jeff and Neil. I math semi-professionally, so... It's a high-scoring game so far, guys. It, it is. I gotta make it harder next time. No, 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 no. no, no. This is actually <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the questions are, are great, and it's just we're we're feeling a lot better today than we were last time. You're yeah. Just so good today. so um, the episode last week's episode hasn't aired at the time of recording, so I'm sure when Liz listens to that, uh, you know, in a couple days, she'll change her tune. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty rough. <laughs> the truth lies in somewhere in the middle. All and, fair, and, though. And it wasn't it's all fair. No, no, it was very fair. The questions were incredibly written, but we just were not shown, shown up that day. Wait, so. No, we were not good. Okay. Um, I have the final round categories for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Let's jump right in. Yeah. Okay. Category for question one is the names in our stars. Category two is Don McLean knows. Category three is I'm the king of the world. Category four is holiday destinations. And number five is second act politicians. All right, we're uh, we're all locked in with our wagers. Okay, I just need to put some half and half in my coffee. I have my uh, assistant here, my waiter, who's not bringing me the correct items. <laughs> we need to get some interns too. I think that's what yes, Yeah, we do need an go. intern if you, if you want to send them over for a little while. <laughs> yeah. You want to be the intern there in Chicago? Should we help? Or if anybody lives in Chicago and they'd like to do some free work for us, uh, we can't pay because we have no it's money. It's unpaid. But... No college credit. Yeah. Yeah, but if you guys want uh, resume building. Uh... <laughs> hey, I, I've worked so many times for free. So it's for exposure. That's what we say. I do this job for free. You guys ready? We're we ready. are ready. Uh, category one, the names in our stars. In which constellation will you find the two giant stars, Betelgeuse and Rigel? Question two. What three musicians were killed in a plane crash on the day the music died? Question three, which ship was the first to reach the Titanic to rescue survivors? Question four, the successor state to the Khmer Empire is what modern day nation? Question five, what late American singer was the mayor of Palm Springs, California from 1988 to 1992. Did you want to separate? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, for the record, I was just hoping it was going to be Shailene Woodley and just Ansel wanna... Elgort, but it was not. Uh, second Act Politicians. Um, so here's my, my logic on this one. Uh, I know Sonny Bono got into politics late in life before he right. died. I thought he was a senator or like a congressman, but perhaps he was mayor before that. And Palm Springs is a kind of a affluent um, Sonny, not, not because of his name, but... It's just an affluent like neighborhood, and I could see him like winning there easily because he's a celebrity rather than trying to do like a bigger town. I was trying to think it was like uh, I, like a Dean Martin type. Clint Eastwood was mayor of Carmel. Ah, but yeah. he's not a singer. I mean, he sings, but he's not a singer. Right. Um, Please don't sing, Clint. Yes, right. Exactly. Grand Torino. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All of our answers are locked in. So for the first question, the category was the names in our stars. Um, the question was, in which constellation will you find the two giant stars, Beetlejuice and Rigel? Uh, Neil and Jeff bet 15. What did you guys answer? Uh, we went Orion on this one. And Ken and Matt for 10. Yeah. Um, I remember I asked a question about, uh, Orion's armpit being Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's possible that there's some constellation overlap, but we just went with the safe bet and went Orion. Orion is correct. All right. 
Question two, in Don McLean Knows, I was looking for which three musicians were killed in a plane crash on the day the music died. Uh, Ken and Matt, what did you guys wager? We went zero on this one, and uh, we're going with Buddy Holly, the Big Bopper, and that third guy. So uh, kind of kind of crazy. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you guys did the same thing we did on the strength of not knowing American Pie lyrics. We mm-hmm. also said zero. Um, but we think we have this one. What did you say, Neil? So Buddy Holly and Big Bopper were definitely two of them. Uh, but we also added uh, La Bamba himself, Richie Valens. Mm. That's right. That is correct. Richie! <laughs> Big La Bamba fans. For Big fed zero. Yeah, nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry to tr- uh, freak you out on the Don McLean lyrics. That's a good idea for a category, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, Question three, the category was, I'm the king of the world. I was looking for the sh- first ship to reach the Titanic to rescue survivors. Uh, Neil and Jeff, what did you guys wager? Uh, we wagered 10 on this one, and uh, we were kind of going back and forth between uh, ship names. We thought it was like a female name, like Catherine or Victoria, but we ended up settling on Victoria. We didn't really think this one through because another name just came to mind. But Oh, okay. That's fine. Well, we went with Victoria. Victoria. <laughs> yeah, we went 20 on this one. Um for some reason, just like a like a C name was sticking in my head, uh, and I just went with something that sounded kind of regal, and we went with Concord. So as as we were reading it out, I'm just going to say this just for the record, but uh, Carpathia came to mind. Mm, I think and that's I right. don't know if that's it or I not. I think that but might be it. That is correct. The <sighs> RMS Carpathia. Yeah, as I soon as it was, as soon as Neil started scene. reading, and he's like, "Oh, it's the it's Victoria," I was like, "No, no it's not. Nope." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, question number four in the category of holiday destinations. The successor state to the Khmer Empire is what modern day nation? Ken and Matt. We went 10 on this one. Um, I knew that the uh, Khmer Rouge was the name of uh, Pol Pot's like, stormtrooper uh, political group. And uh, there was kind of a, a mention of holiday destinations. So we're figuring it's a holiday in Cambodia at long last. The joke resolves itself, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Um, also thinking of uh, in that region, Southeast Asia, um, based on the strength of the name, um, and given that it's a popular tourist destination, we wagered five points, and uh, we're hoping that it's Thailand. The Oakland Five uh, will not be awarded in this in this case because the answer is Cambodia. Yeah, yeah we, we make we've... holiday in Cambodia jokes all the time. <laughs> what's, that, what's that joke from? <laughs> it's the name of a dead Kennedy song. song. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's tough here, Neil, but it's life. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad you guys got the uh, clue in the mm-hmm. joke anyway, or the joke in the clue. Okay, and the last uh, question was in the category of second act politicians. Uh, I was asking which late American singer was the mayor of Palm Springs from 1988 to 1992? Neil and Jeff. Uh, so we wager 10. Uh, my logic for this one was it had to be a celebrity who picked Palm Springs because it, it was a little bit smaller, figured they could win there. And I knew someone who I thought was a congressman, but maybe they only ended up being a mayor. Uh, and that would be the late uh, Sonny Bono. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we wagered uh, 20 points on this. Uh, this is a late celebrity who we knew was a politician and also went with Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono is correct. All Ooh, right. Yeah. Okay, the final scores have been tallied. Uh, me and Matt have ended up with a 184 score and with a whopping 210. Once again, uh, the uh, Globetrotters over here are the cream of the crap. The cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Uh, the real cream of the crop today is Liz Hudson. So yeah. thank you for hosting. You're welcome. She's a great host and a great mother, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we saw Beckett. He he seemed healthy. Yeah. Fe- well He's fed. Breathing. He's breathing. That's all you can <laughs> ask for yeah. as a mother. He asked a he asked a stellar question. So yes, he was clothed. Yeah. There's a roof over his head. Yeah. Now I know you said he wasn't recording uh, that much lately. Is he still recording his podcast or no? Uh, they have not during the school year. They've been busy, but they're uh, they have been talking about getting it back together. So hopefully they'll. Oh great! We'll have to put the link back in there. What's the name of it again? It's called the B and R Report. Ah. The B and R Report. What's the R stand for? Robert. Robert. Oh. Beckett and Robert. <laughs> he's uh he's the silent partner over there. He hasn't come over to say hi. <laughs> it's not very good for a podcast to be a silent partner. <laughs> <laughs> Well, little do the n- listeners of Triviality know, we do actually have a silent fifth member, but they just never talk. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Uh, I did want to say thank you uh, to Omar Mahmoud who helped me write these questions um, and figure out what was, what were good things to ask, like about video games because I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, this was a great, uh, a great game. Very yeah. well balanced. That one might be my fun. biggest regret. 
video game. Yeah, yeah. You should feel bad. I've played Skyrim in excess of eight hundred hours. You would think I would know the <laughs> opening line from that. Maybe you didn't talk to that guy. Yeah, you skipped him. No, I think he's like you're. You're getting wheeled down in a cart mm-hmm. in the opening scene, and that probably probably says that because you're injured. Uh, this was really fun. I had a good time, and I have a whole second set of questions. So if you want me back, I can. Oh, come we'll, back. we'll have you back very yes, soon. Please, yes. Uh, anytime you want, you're you're always welcome here uh, as the inventor of the Oakland Five. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, uh, that was a uh, an awesome game. Thank you again to Liz Hudson for always being a wonderful guest. Uh, For Ken, Matt, and Jeff, my name is Neil, and that was Triviality. Well, you know me, Gene, I like getting on in Oakland, California, man, because I kind of get to bend the rules a little bit. That's why the people of Oakland get off on me. They don't care if I come riding up in a big long limousine or with a 24-inch python hanging off a big hog. (laughs) 